could Bitcoin actually become a world reserve currency? I know it sounds ridiculous, even ludicrous, but hear me out. This could be a real possibility and a lot of people think so as well. Now this isn't to be confused with a one world currency. This is a world reserve currency. See at the moment, the US dollar is the world reserve currency followed by the Euro. But the US dollar is used internationally and is kept in reserves by countries and financial institutions because it's the currency used the most for international trade. But could Bitcoin actually replace the US dollar one day to become the global world reserve currency? Now, Bitcoin as a world reserve currency might not be as ridiculous as it sounds by the time we get to the end of this video. But first of all, let's just start off by providing some context around what exactly a world reserve currency is. Now, there's two kind of definitions in this space, and there's reserve currency, and then there's world reserve currency. And the two, as similar as they are worded, are actually quite different and it's worth pointing out what those differences are. So a reserve currency is a currency that is kept in reserve and generally that will be done by the domestic country that actually issues that particular currency itself. Now the difference between a world reserve currency is a currency that's held by foreign entities and institutions. So for example, the US dollar, the US dollar is actually held in very significant amounts by many, many countries and financial institutions. And they do this to settle transactions, to conduct international trade, and to also pay their own debts and liabilities. So at the moment, the main world reserve currency is the US dollar. That is used primarily across the world for international trade and settlement. And it's become the number one currency because the US is the global superpower. They dominate in terms of GDP and the strength of their economy, and they have for a number of decades. So their currency has kind of become the pseudo standard, that world reserve currency that's been used around the world. But in a close second is the Euro, and that's because the Euro is the combination of all the Euro European countries that have signed on as signatories to the European Union. Now, to take a quick history lesson, reserve currencies actually go back as far as the 17th century. The Dutch guilder was the reserve currency throughout Europe during the 17th and 18th centuries. And interestingly, this was shortly after the period of tulip mania. Tulips in the Netherlands became so popular that prices skyrocketed. And this actually led to an unregulated futures market where people were trading tulip futures. I know that sounds ridiculous to you and me, but I can just imagine them back then. Anyway, the futures market eventually crashed. Now, anyone in the crypto community knows that Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, has referred to Bitcoin as tulip mania a couple of times back in 2017. Now, during the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, the British pound sterling was actually the global reserve currency. But following World War I and World War II, the US emerged as the new superpower, and so the US dollar took over the pound sterling to become the new world reserve currency. So how does a currency actually get world reserve status? What is the criteria it needs to achieve to get that label? Well, the first thing is it must be a relatively stable currency. The second thing is it must have liquidity. And the third thing is it must be used globally. So following this criteria, it makes perfect sense that the US dollar has become the world reserve currency due to the fact that the US is the global superpower and their economy and GDP is higher than every other country in the world. In fact, the USD is actually the most held currency in reserves today. Two thirds of the total foreign exchange reserves have been in US dollars. The USD is also used as the main currency for international commodities markets, such as oil and gold. The term petrodollar is often used to refer to how much a country is spending on petroleum exports. Now here is where we transition to a little bit more history around something called the gold standard, when dollars used to be backed 
by physical gold. The gold standard actually came into life in 1944 under something called the Bretton Woods Agreement. This agreement ensured that the price of the US dollar was pegged to the price of gold. So what that meant was a dollar note was actually a guarantee for a reserve of physical gold. Now, as we know, gold is an actual physical asset that has value because of its demand, because of its scarcity, and because of its limited supply. So after the US went to the Bretton Woods Agreement, other countries soon followed and ended up pegging the value of their currencies to the US dollar, which was backed by gold. Now the gold standard actually remained in the decades prior to the world wars and countries would actually settle their major transactions in physical gold. So you would have countries with stockpiles of gold whose economies were doing really well and then other countries whose economies weren't doing so well would have depleted supplies as these supplies would change hands in these major international settlements. Now, on August the 15th, 1971, the gold standard ended after then President Richard Nixon announced that the Federal Reserve would no longer redeem dollars with gold. Then in 1976, the price of gold was completely decoupled from the value of the dollar altogether. So why all the history on the US dollar when we're supposed to be talking about Bitcoin as a world reserve currency? Well, because it's interesting and valuable to know the history because see, at the moment, the US dollar is a fiat backed currency. Now, fiat means that the government has had to guarantee the value of that note. Whereas before, when it was backed by gold, that was the guarantee. That note was a essentially a ticket for some physical gold. And here's where we start to tie into Bitcoin because see, Bitcoin, Although digital is an equity based asset, when you own some Bitcoin, you actually own that physical Bitcoin. So there's very interesting analogies between gold and Bitcoin when you think about it in the context of it becoming a global reserve currency. Now we know Bitcoin is not fiat money. Bitcoin is a digitally secure asset that allows the transfer of value between people. But the crazy thing is Bitcoin actually has the characteristics of fiat money and it also has the characteristics of gold because it's both a store of value and it's a medium of exchange as well. Now going a little bit further, the relationship that Bitcoin has to gold is that we know it's limited in supply, but its relationship to money is that we know the value is based on supply and demand. The power a country yields by having the world reserve currency status is tremendous. So if you think about it, a single country's money is used around the world for trade. It's kept in reserves, it's used to settle large debts, and it's also used as a political weapon or as punishment on countries or companies. This is just one example. In 2015, a French international banking group called BNP Paribas violated US sanctions imposed after they laundered 100 billion US dollars from Sudan, Iran, and Cuba. These three countries had active sanctions imposed by the United States, and the US federal court found out and barred the bank from engaging in certain US dollar denominated transactions and fined them $8.9 billion for the affair. So what this shows is the power of a fiat world reserve currency and the impact that it can have on other countries. But the truth is it actually goes far deeper than that. You see, fiat currency is printed by central banks such as the US dollar and the US Federal Reserve. Contrary to popular belief, the US Federal Reserve is not a government entity. It is an independent central bank governed by seven presidentially appointed board members. But here's the crazy thing. These board members can make decisions that do not have to be approved by regulators. Again, the Federal Reserve is an independent entity and something private entity as well. Now, the rate at which a bank actually prints money is based on their evaluation of the economy at any given time. And this is actually supposed to be done to control inflation. But here's the risk. This can lead to something called hyperinflation, which is what has been happening in Venezuela with the Venezuelan Bolivar. The Venezuelan Bolivar, their local currency, has experienced such severe inflation in such a short amount of time, the currency has become virtually worthless. Just this year, the International Monetary Fund had this to say about the dire situation. We expect the government to continue to run wide fiscal deficits financed entirely by an expansion in base money, which will continue to fuel an acceleration of inflation as money as demand continues 
continues to collapse. We are projecting a surge in inflation to 1 million percent by the end of 2018. Venezuela is in crisis as the country's debt continues to grow and its domestic currency becomes worthless. A Bitcoin world reserve currency could be the solution here. So what we're looking at in Venezuela is a case study of what can happen when unregulated printing of money occurs and leads to hyperinflation. And the scary part is many people think this could be happening in the United States as we speak. Because in all honesty, despite the growing and booming economy that has transpired after President Trump got elected, the country's debt continues to grow and it is unfeasible or impossible for them to even pay it back. As of today, the US national debt stands at 21.7 trillion dollars that's trillion with a t and with a debt to revenue ratio of negative four percent that's basically how much money the country is making and able to pay their debts the debt cannot feasibly be paid off so essentially they're not making enough money to pay the debt off. The fear many economists have is that the US is on a path to a major collapse if it defaults on its debts. Because the US dollar is the world reserve currency you see, a crash could see a global economic crisis of never before seen proportions. The US dollars held in reserve by countries around the world would become worthless overnight. And see, so here's the thing of what we've seen in history before, that during times of economic crisis, investors normally turn to precious metals such as gold or silver. In fact, during the global financial crisis, which kicked off in 2008, the price of gold went up for two and a half years straight to record all-time highs. Now, when we take in all this information and we examine all these facts, here's where a decentralized currency such as Bitcoin that isn't printed by any one institution that is run by cryptographically secure code starts to make more and more sense as a potential for a world reserve currency. Because Bitcoin is not controlled by any one party, it is fully decentralized, the supply is known. Even the rate of inflation is known and public down to the exact block height, which happens every four years. The characteristics of Bitcoin and its proven use case as a store of value and peer-to-peer -peer currency has been proven now for 10 years. So knowing that, could a Bitcoin world reserve currency really happen? And if it could happen, then how would it happen? Well, we examined earlier that a world reserve currency needs to be stable, it needs to be liquid, and it needs to be used globally. Even in its current early state after just 10 years of inception, Bitcoin is all those things. Let's look at a few facts. So Bitcoin right now currently has 30 million unique wallet addresses and growing every day. It has a market cap of 100 billion at the time of recording this video, but hit a peak of 330 billion in December 2017. Bitcoin allows significant sums of money to be transferred across borders for virtually zero fees. It operates 24-7 on over 200 global markets and as of today was doing $4.5 billion in daily trading volume. We know Bitcoin financial products are starting to come to the forefront. We've got Bitcoin futures by CBOE and we've got a number of Bitcoin ETF applications which are bound to be approved at some point in the near future. Not only is Bitcoin the most secure network of any cryptocurrency, it's never been hacked. Wallets, merchants, consumers, and other type of supporting software packages are improving by the day. Bitcoin has received clarification from the SEC that is not a security, and we know that global regulations are starting to catch up and are starting to discuss, talk about, and implement regulations that are hopefully gonna to continue to be favorable for Bitcoin. So year after year, Bitcoin survives and Bitcoin thrives. Bitcoin manages to exceed everyone's expectations despite the constant barrage it gets from people still that it's gonna die. Bitcoin is still here. So let's now talk about the Bitcoin network effects. A man by the name of Trace Mayer is a prominent Bitcoin investor, educator, expert, and host of the Bitcoin Knowledge Podcast. Back in 2015, Trace explained his thesis on the seven network effects of Bitcoin. These were speculation, merchant adoption, consumer adoption, security, developer mindshare, financialization, and the adoption of a Bitcoin world reserve currency. We know that points one through six have already occurred or are in the process of occurring. 
We know that people invest speculatively. We know that merchants around the world are starting to accept Bitcoin more and more. And we know that consumers are becoming more and more aware of it and to some degree getting involved themselves. The Bitcoin network has stayed secure for 10 years and firms like Blockstream are continuing to innovate and develop products on the Bitcoin code base. And we also know that financial products are continuing to be created on Bitcoin, as we discussed earlier, like the Bitcoin ETF and Bitcoin futures. So Trace's remarks that again were made back in 2015 seem to be right on the money. Today, we have incredible developments coming to Bitcoin, such as Liquid, where Liquid is a side chain attached to the main Bitcoin blockchain that allows for the issuing of new tokens and assets. And that's directly off the Bitcoin blockchain. This one development alone, you've just got to realize, has the potential to bring enormous additional value to Bitcoin that is truly hard to quantify. So to wrap this up, the modern fiat-backed economic system is dire. Rising inflation, global debt, quantitative easing, and mismanagement from central banks. The US superpower is trillions of dollars in debt that it cannot repay. So where does this leave us for the future? Honestly, we don't know. And it's risky to sit here and speculate or to pretend like we all know what's gonna happen. Because the truth is we don't, and it could be dire. But the optimistic thing is, self-sovereign assets like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are giving us something to look forward to. They're giving us a way out. The rise of Bitcoin is giving an alternative to the modern but outdated fiat-backed system that is in urgent need of replacement. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are bringing back self-sovereignty and control of money and could very well empower an entirely new generation. So guys, that's it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Sorry it took so long to get another video up. We've been tremendously busy here at Cryptocurrency Australia getting our website ready, working on producing really good written content in addition to video. But aside from that, I'm really, really interested in hearing your opinions on Bitcoin as a world reserve currency. In fact, I'm gonna give one of our custom Bitcoin neon t-shirts to the best comment. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to comment down below and tell me whether you think Bitcoin could really become a world reserve currency, or if you don't think It'll become a world reserve currency and i want you to back up what you're saying with your true thoughts about why and in a week i'm going to pick the best comment and i'm going to send them a free bitcoin shirt so that's it to wrap it up guys make sure you leave a like if you like the video really really appreciate that and really appreciate your support we've got three more bitcoin videos coming after this one they'll be released each week one week after another thanks so much for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next one cheers